Hello everyone, we're officially doing the super slow Game Boy test. And what you have to have is uh, one game on your main user interface, or you could load it via the dummy folder. But I'm loading uh, F-Zero right now for SNES. And I have it triggered with the B SNES core, like so. It has B SNES loaded right now. And once you have it loaded, you have content loaded with the B SNES core. You're going to go down into the options. You're going to say a little option while B S N E S is open. While you're in RetroArch, it's going to say load Super Game Boy. Now you're simply going to select the game that you'd like to play. And these have to be extracted. They cannot be zipped. And I'm using a dummy folder, but you can do this on non-USB host as well. You can just go to one of the folders that you have a Game Boy game in and pick it from there. But I'm doing it through the dummy folder right now. And I have a bunch of uh, Super Game Boy games that are already extracted. And we'll load a... Uh, let's do a test here. Which one should I do? We'll do a Blaster Master Enemy Below as our first test game. Now that I have that loaded, it's going to say load Super Game Boy. Now I'm going to have to actually load the Super Game Boy for SNES cartridge. So I'm going to dummy folder again. And I have the cartridge extracted here. Super Game Boy World Revision 2. SFC. Then I'm simply going to start Super Game Boy. And this is incredibly slow, but it is a great novelty, a great gimmick. It feels like I'm right back in the 1990s with AOL again. Waiting for that little boot up sequence, the connection to the 56k internet. And we have a uh, Super Game Boy on the screen, and the game's loading. Again, it's going to be extremely slow, but this is pretty awesome seeing the borders that display for these various games. And I have a few ideas about these borders that could parlay into, uh, you know, a more realized uh, Super Game Boy type experience. And I'll show you my idea in a moment here. But we're going to do a couple test games here. Again, this is incredibly slow. I don't know if any of you uh, watched the 24 show with Jack in it, but, you know, Keith or Sutherland, but they did a parody where they basically had 24 taking place in the times of AOL, and <laughs> it was hilarious. One of the funniest YouTube videos I've seen. But here comes the borders for the first test game here. And that's really nifty. But uh, I've made a custom border, RetroArch border, uh, HMOD in my set. So technically, we could make these borders akin to this right here. I mean, this is really cool. So we got the game loaded, but it's slow, of course. Let's try getting in-game and seeing how slow it really is. But yes, I'm officially playing Super Game Boy on the SNES Classic right now. Here we go. Some games run faster than others, but there's another core that runs Game Boy games as well, which I'm going to show you too with some of these test examples. But yeah, this is how fast it runs. So I'm on my 56K connection right now. And there was a time when I downloaded the entire MAME set on 56K throughout my entire school summer vacation and it was a now defunct website called Supernova but when I started getting into the Neo Geo games it would literally take 45 minutes to two hours and a half to download the games and they would fail most of the time. It was just it was pretty bad as far as downloading stuff back then. But this is Blaster Master. Now we're going to load another game. I'm going to go back to RetroArch Options, but this is a really cool border, and it'd be great to see this done for the custom borders. I'm going to go back to Load Super Game Boy. Again, you have to initially load the BSNES core and or load content as far as a BSNES game. Once you do that, you could have this option up in your menu, and this will be in the new RetroArch I post today, but I'm going to load another Super Game Boy game here. We'll try uh, Castlevania. We'll do, uh... Yeah, Castlevania should be a good one. 
Castlevania Legends, Super Game Boy Adv Enhanced. Load that. Now we have to load the Super Game Boy cartridge again. Again, you could, like I said, you could do this via dummy folder, or you could do it if you have the games in your normal interface, just like this. You just know which folder they're in and go right into it. Just have them extracted if you're going to run them through Super Game Boy. You could also create a dummy folder, not in USB host as well, via FTP if you'd like to do it that way. But anyways, I'm going to load the cartridge. Dummy folder method. Super Game Boy. Again, Super Game Boy World Revision 2. Start Super Game Boy. And we'll have the AOL again. And here we go. Just need the sound effect to go along with AOL here. But I'm loving this border, and even this border right here could be done for the SNES Classic. We could easily do this and have the right aspect ratio and dimensions. I have an HMOD in folder format for custom RetroArch borders, and I've done videos on it, so it'd be pretty easy to do a border like this. And you just have to go into your video settings, and you could adjust your aspect ratio right here. You could just do that, or you could adjust them custom-wise. And if you get one that you like, you can go to Quick Settings. And you could save Core or save Game Override. So you could save a specific border for a game or for a core if you'd like to do it that way. But we're going to resume here. And we're going to see what kind of nifty border we get for Castlevania here. So we have the borders established here. But we're going to get on to the color portion as well, the next element of this. And I, I tried tweaking this, Mad Monkey tried helping me out with this too, but due to the extremely high accuracy and uh, CPU intensiveness of this, I mean, this really does require a strong GPU, CPU, and processor. I mean, it's just the way it is. You can run this on a PC just fine, though, if you really want to run the Super Game Boy. But it is a nice novelty gimmick on the SNES Classic, and it does run on the NES Classic as well. But here we have the AOL loading screen. It's almost like going to uh, Walgreens and buying one of them uh, p LCD picture screens where you have the pictures going across the screen slow for a period of 10 minutes. Cool border here. So this is our second game here. Oh, right back to the 1990s here. Am I ever going to get in the game? <laughs> We're only going to do three test games. Then I'm going to show you something very interesting. And this is the only core capable of running Top Gear 3000, of course. And I'm going to try to tweak and optimize this core to better run that, because, I mean, this really does have the best compatibility for SNES if we could get it up to speed a little bit more here. But let's, this border is really cool here. Let's see how fast this game moves. And again, there are so many undiscovered borders that I've never seen. I mean, I've only played a few Super Game Boy games on the actual SNES back in the day. I was more or less into having an actual Game Boy and having an actual Super Nintendo. I didn't go out of my way to actually get the Super Game Boy cartridge. I should have, though. I believe it was like 80 US dollars when it came out. It was pretty expensive. So let's get a little bit of quick action here. Well, should I say slow action? I just want to see how the game runs for a moment here. There we go. It's like I'm playing one of them handheld Tiger Castlevania games right now. I really, really wish this would run faster than 12 frames per second. I mean, this is... This really is about as fast as I've initially played Saturn games and... Dreamcast games and such on the PC in the earlier emulation stages, but this is ridiculous 
But one positive thing is the the game's being pseudo slow motion like this, it would actually be easier. It's like using an NES advantage in the slow motion button. Especially if you're playing a shmup game out here. But we're gonna try one more test game. We're gonna try a Bomberman game. Why not? So I'm gonna load Super Game Boy. Dummy Super Game Boy folder. And remember, these have to be extracted. Let's see what Bomberman game we have here to test out. We'll try a uh, Bomberman Game Boy. This should be good right here. Then I gotta load the cartridge again. Super Game Boy World Revision 2. Start get Super Game Boy. When you open up the new RetroArch, it's going to have the same type of RetroArch interface that I have right now. Okay, let's see how Bomberman plays on here and see what kind of borders I have for that. We're going to test these exact same three games out on the Game Boy emulator and compare them. But let's see what these borders are like here real fast. And I don't think there's anything such as a bit there's no such thing as a bad Bomberman game. I've been a tremendous fan ever since I first discovered it on the TurboGrafx 16. That version is by far more colorful palette wise than the NES version. So we're almost in game here. Kind of almost sort of. And let's see what kind of nifty boards we get here. I have to say, I, I spent a couple hours just going through these games and discovering all these very cool borders. I'd love to see many of these uh, migrate over to the SNES Classic, NES Classic. This is very cool. I love the palette. I love the borders. I mean, it's worth it just for that alone. Even if I have this running in the background while I'm doing my Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and all that good stuff, it's still fun to have in the background. <laughs> But I almost consider this a template for better things to come, whereas we would do these borders. I'm sure a few of you guys and gals out there are going to take the time to try to put some of these borders together, and then we'll focus on some palettes. We could have some good, you know, basically conversions of these in retrospect, basically. Really cool borders here. I'm loving this stuff. I like how they change on the fly, too. Like I said, I've only played a few Super Game Boy games, and some of the ones I've played didn't have these custom borders to them. And I'm hoping that uh, when we get to the point of having a, a mini N64, that they may potentially do a mini Game Boy, but also have the Super Game Boy support. That'd be really incredibly awesome. So I have to slowly move and select my mode here. And let's see how fast this game moves. Again, we're doing three test games for speed here. And that, like I said, I played some games that move faster than others. And I'm still going to try to tweak and optimize this to run them as fast as possible. Whatever way it takes. Now we're going to load another core entirely. We're going to load the, the great Game Boy Gambetta core. Right here, Gambate, G A M B A T T E. If you happen to use uh, Gambetta and MGBA at the same time, make sure you pay attention to the command lines that I have in my course. That I have a folder with all the command lines so you could actually dual use these and not have any conflicts. But uh, right now, I'm going to load this core and I'm going to load content and I'm going to load the same games that I just loaded as a comparison here. We'll load the Blaster Master, see how that looks. That was a Game Boy Color game to begin with, so we probably won't see a whole lot different there. Gambetta. And we have the speed. Okay, let's try another one here. And of course, we could do the borders too, but uh, low content. So the Super Game Boy one wasn't the best example. I'll do the Castlevania one, and we'll just uh, 
do the Japanese version of it. Akumaju Dracula, right here. We're loaded with Gambada. And we have it in black and white now. Remember when we were playing the Super Game Boy version a few minutes ago. Wow, it's fast now. <laughs> and I know this guy here that they just showed on the screen did a, a crowdfund style thing where he's basically trying to get a new Castlevania game on next gen as far as like PS4 and such. I'm hoping that's still going pretty good. Now here's what here's the really really cool thing about the Gambetta chord. Let's watch this. So we're starting the game here. And this is where the the Super Game Boy experience could come into play here. Just watch this. So I'm in game here. I'm gonna go into the retro arc options. Well should I yeah, retro arc options. Quick menu. Options for the core itself. Game Boy coloration. Colorization, should I say? I'm gonna turn it on to auto and I'm gonna resume. I have it in color now. And that is really cool. So, by having these uh, load needs to the Super Game Boy via BSNES, you get an idea of what the palette should be like and you get an idea of what the border should be like. Now, we're gonna try adding a custom border here. Let's see what I even have. I'm not sure if I even installed any borders, but... You're going to go to on-screen display, on-screen overlay, overlay preset, and again, I have a, a border HMOD as well, and you're going to be able to do that at your own. They're in, uh, I have them in a folder format as well as some predestined ones as well, but let's see which ones I have here. I have one single one, so this is a fail right now. I didn't have this ready to go, but you know what I mean here. I had a great Castlevania 4 one, which would have been perfect for this game, but there's my fail. But if you go to my uh, other video where I'm doing the custom RetroArch borders, you see me displaying the Castlevania 4 border. But here we have the palette anyway. Again, I never edit my videos. I just didn't prepare myself to have the border installed for this. I should have had it installed. But you get the idea. Here we could change the internal palette to different colors here if we'd like to as well. That's really cool too. Let's gonna do another test here with the other game. We'll try that Bomberman game. And uh, I did another video about colorizing Game Boy games as well many, many years ago. I found out about it and I spent hours colorizing my own Metroid Prime, you know, Metroid Return of Samus game. And I did an okay job. I put that hack on to the NES Classic and the color scheme didn't work out so well. But there were a few patches to other versions of it since then. And I'm going to show you that as well. But I'll show you that from the main menu in a moment here. But we're going to try that same Bomberman game on here and see how that looks in color. It was a Bomberman Game Boy. And again, we're loading just the standard version on Gambetta. But now we have the palette enabled and options. But of course, we can go back in a quick menu, options. And we could disable that. And there's what it would normally look like. But now we're going to turn it back on. Quick my new options again. So it's nice. You can actually add your own borders as well as do the colorization. So uh, we're going to turn it on. Now we have our color again. Really cool. But I'll show you an example of what would happen if you really do take an exponential amount of time to do your own color scheme. In this case, we're going to load the great Game Boy Color, Metroid 2 Return of Samus. This, this is a great, great black and white into color hack. It's incredible. Now I'm going to run this through MGBA right now. And this is a, they did a tremendous job with this. And I did get this for Christmas, the 3DS version, and I'm very happy with it. You know, the, the new rendition of it, almost like a Metroid Zero Mission for Game Boy Advance, but done on 3DS with Metroid Return of Samus.
Now this, this is pretty incredible. They did, like I said, a fantastic job. And when I go to the black and white version, is an you know a comparison to this. There's a tremendous difference there. Now I'm gonna load the black and white version here. Low core. Nintendo Game Boy game beta. Low content. Now go to my Game Boy folder. And we'll load the Metroid black and white version here. And compare them directly. And when I did the colorize, and people have done Mega Man 2 and several other games, there's a, a limit to how much memory you could use as far as doing it. And sometimes you actually get some really funny, goofy glitches that make it even more fun to check the games out. Now, where's my Metroid? Tell me I don't have it here. <laughs> It's like I have every game in here except for Metroid, unless I pass right by it. It looks like I failed two times in this video. I do not have the Metroid Return of Samus in my Game Boy folder. So there's my second fail for the day. <laughs> but anyways, hope you enjoyed the Super Game Boy video. And I'm going to be posting this today for you guys to check out. Be sure to do the colorization within the Gambetta Core and check out the custom RetroArch borders. Go back to my previous video and check out how I load it. And uh, once you have the border loaded, you can change the aspect ratio as I showed you. Again, that would be within video settings, aspect ratio. Right now I have it set to custom, but you could do... Um, Core provided, like so. So if I exit back to the main GUI, go up to display, I'll pick CRT filter right now. I'll pick my frame. We'll give it a nice TV appearance there for the hell of it. And I'll load that uh, Metroid again, and we should have a border. And again, you can go into your video options. And you could change your aspect ratio to fit. But right now it's fitting pretty nicely. So imagine having a Super Game Boy Borders with this right now. That would be incredibly awesome. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. There will be more to come and my update will be posted soon.